If you're bringing your models out of another program like Nomad or Forger from the iPad and you want to do a check for 3D print, you can use ZBrush. Or if you're just coming out of ZBrush anyway, this is what I always do. And I put a cube in and I run what's called a live Boolean through the model to look for errors. And this is how I try and identify errors before I ever get to 3D print, so before I ever get to any slicing software. So let's take a look at how we use this in ZBrush and just before we go to 3D print. So I'm going to send a print to slicing for 3D print, but I just want to check some things on it first. So I want to check if there's any thin areas. I want to check if there's any problems that I'm not aware of before I send it for slicing. So this is a DynaMesh model. So what I generally do is put a cube in there and have that basically move through the model as a live Boolean. So let me explain what that means. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go use append and then put a cube in the scene. You can see there now there's a cube and the, the creature. So I'm going to move the cube over to the side and make it taller on the Y axis and wider on, back and front on the Z axis. And then I'm going to make sure Boolean up top left is switched on here, live Boolean. And I'm going to hit the second two spheres, which gives you it's now a Boolean object. Now, before we go any further, let me just change the color so I can really see any problems. So I'll go extreme for this example. So I'm going to change the head of the creature to green and hit fill object. So we now know it's locked to a green color. And I'm going to change the cube to a red color. And I'm going to fill that even though you can't see that. So now what I'm going to do is now move the cube through the, the creature. And you'll see it's pretty much like you would see on a slicer. On a, on a 3D print slicer. And this is a great way to check that there's no problems before you even go and look at slicing. So on this way, moving through the X axis, I'm looking for any um, floating geometry that's been missed by DynaMesh or any holes. So if I come to about, let me think about here, I have to question what that is there. Now, is that okay or is that some geometry inside? I'm not overly sure. So I'll just pick a third color, use a standard brush, and I'll just paint that. Um, just make sure I'm on the demon, not on the, the, the cube. And I'll just paint blue there just to see where that is. So move back to the cube and carry on with W, carry on moving it through the model. So we can just see if there's any more issues. And I'm looking, if this was a character with wings, I'm looking for anything that's too thin. So you might think that that's too thin on the top, but it's not, it's just the end sliver. And there's a way to check that in a moment because we're gonna do this up and down the Y axis as well. So we move all the way through. And if there's no issues whatsoever or nothing else that we've seen, bring it back, turn it off for now, and then have a look at where that blue was. Well, to be honest, it was just because it was tucked behind something. So that wasn't an internal space or it wasn't a problem. It just looked like it was, but that's really given me confidence that that, that little bit was okay. So that's quite useful. And then if we switch this back on, if you want to quickly see where it is, Shift and F will give you the wireframe and you can do it like this. So I now want to have it so it moves down through the Y axis like so. So if you move it there like that, and then shift and F to get rid of that and then just slowly now move through and this is like your slicing so now you're looking for thin areas you're looking for anything that might cause you um, any kind of problem that's going to go too thin and might break off or if there's any again any internal spaces that have screwed up that the slicer will pick a lot of it up um, and it does depend on what type of 3D printing you're going for whether it's going to be FDM so the filament based uh, printers or whether it's going to be a um, a resin printer and again it looks now at this point this is effectively just looking like um, w w what you uh, what you would expect from from a 3d printer you can move your cursor around your, your gizmo around with using alt if you just want to you know control it a little bit better but this is so useful and when I started using this it was for face replacements on puppetry because what I was looking for is how thin some of the walls were for the facial masks. So if I just show you an example here, this is a Hellboy we've just done on a an iPad and all of the clothes were layered on the top and then dynameshed in. But if you now have a look, I've, I've actually found all of these little pieces here that were all floating around. So I've, del I've basically deleted them out and I've put this Hellboy with the cube and just done 
what we what we've done with the other character but look at all the problems this is before we've cleaned it up and look at all the problems inside so where the clothing is laid over the top there's air pockets and the slicer and the hollowing will find that and 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 it could throw up errors and if you look this model before we've done anything to it it's all the way through and that's where i've just got clothing laid over the top of skin and it's left an air pocket so and you can see it down onto the shoulder and you can see it coming all the way down here and that's going to give you errors all the time if you take that one step further and do it with one that's already hollowed let me just have a look at this one and move this one and you can see there that's that model that's now been been hollowed and it's giving me all kinds of errors so i've actually done like a 2.3 mil shell or hollowing and i do that in chitterbox for this particular one so it has had a go at it but it has left me with quite a few rogue air spaces there that, that that probably will print but that just might be the one thing that caused you a massive print fail so just just be aware of, of using um you know th this is a great way to go in and check all of this stuff before you ever spend any time doing it with your slicer I really hope you're enjoying these quick tips and I hope that it's giving you information in bite-sized chunks that really helps you with your creative journey. Please subscribe to the channel, like a video that works for you and don't forget to hit the notification bell if it's something that you want to see more of. Have a great week.